everyone, and welcome to This is Pikeville, a time we get together to talk about all the tourism and events going on in the city of Pikeville. Today, we are starting a whole new era in, in tourism for the city of Pikeville, and that is where we welcome Executive Director of Tourism, Paul Bowles, a new hat that you have. I do, uh, <laughs> among others. <laughs> among others, one being the general manager of the Appalachian Wireless Serena, which yes. you've been in that role for a few years now, yeah. but almost, you, four. almost four years. It's hard to believe it's gone that, it's been, it's that quick. Back, yeah, Absolutely. Fast, yeah. Well, here's the thing. You have a love of tourism and you understand tourism because of your involvement uh, over the years um, with, with arena business and scheduling events and scheduling shows. So it really is just a perfect fit for you to slip into the role of executive director of tourism. That's what I'm being told. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. So, but you have a great staff involved, and we, uh, so. you have uh, had the fortune to hire three additional staff members to we your did. team that are really dedicated individually to different um, different sectors of tourism that we can make. Uh, Pikeville a destination, Pikeville tourism, part of a regional effort that we have, um, and we're happy to to get all that started. Yes, uh, you know we were able to bring in Kevin Roberts for special events in a position that was already there, just moved over to the arena, and through the comprehensive plan we created the uh, outdoor recreation. It's PJ Collins who has this just phenomenal outdoor background with him, so he just loves being in the woods. So he's the perfect person, and then we also created an assistant on the tourism side, which is Lauren McCourt, um, and she's kind of taken on the role of uh, being my uh, go-to person on the uh, stuff I don't know what I'm doing on tourism. <laughs> right and left hand, so to speak. So to speak, yes. But really the combination of, of these three individuals led by you um, has really, over the last three months, taken a whole different turn um, as we move forward. They have, they've, uh, you know, it, there's, there's been big projects, there's been little projects. Uh, you know, one of the, the best projects I think was uh, PJ, uh, we wanted to plant some trees. And so he was able to uh, secure some uh, seedlings and uh, bring in the high school students to help with that. It was just a great community event. And then it, that led into uh, the Pride Day where we picked up trash uh, along the, the rivers and roadways and different places with uh, U Pike and Walmart and then the uh, Pike County Pride Association. So just little events like that makes a big difference in the community and it, it helps with the buy-in that, you know, we have a wonderful place. Let's just showcase it for everyone and let's make it make it home. Like I said at the beginning of the show, you have a heart for tourism and a heart for welcoming people into communities. It's been what you've done your entire career. So this is just, um, just an extension of what you've always done. It is, I mean, I'm more on the mass tourism side. Um, but, it, you know, it's no different. I mean, tourism is just the movement of people. So, you know, it, it's one of those, if, if we can figure out how to do a concert with 5,000 people, then why can't we figure out how to do, you know, a girl's night out or, or you know, a pop-up art or something that, you know, takes care of 20 or 30 people. Uh, it's just having something out there that's being done on a continuous basis to to create that traffic of people. I like the way you say that, just maybe for 20 or 30 people, but the great thing about that is those 20 or 30 know another 20 or 30. They do. And so on and so they forth. Do. And then it just kind of snowballs into um, everyone knowing what we have going on and all of those events growing. It is, I mean, and it's not so much just uh, you know, selecting days, but having multiple events on those days. So, you know, you think about it, if we have a concert with, you know, 5,000 people, obviously there's people that are coming from, I mean, most concerts draw from five different states. Uh, so when those people come in, if we've got, you know, pop-up art on the plaza at, at the uh, App Center, or even if it's something going on at the shops at, uh, on, on Second Street, it gives those people something else to do, and they're gonna talk about that. Yeah, yeah the show was why they're here, but there's some of the great things, you know, there, you know, people say, you know, you're not going to believe what we did while we were in Pikeville and, and things like that. So that's what we're trying to do is create those other events that can you know, look at the anchor event that we have that's going to bring people in. And then what can we do to satisfy those hours that they're not at the arena? Something that we've talked about in the past um, with Philip Ellswick is that, you know, we have a lot of conferences and conventions that go on at the arena that a lot of local people don't necessarily know about because these are people coming in from other parts of the state, um, other states themselves, uh, to come in to spend that time here. They're staying in our hotels, they're coming to their event, but just like we saw with these Kentucky Leadership a few weeks ago, a lot of those people, if they were not choosing a particular breakout session, they were shopping downtown yes. and walking around, and that was a great thing. Yeah, it's always nice to be walking around and see the name badges that people right. are wearing 
realize that that's someone that's not local. They're not here, you know, all the time, but they're here now and they're enjoying what we have. And so, you know, uh, there's an old saying that says, you know, uh, you know, always make them feel welcome. So that's what we're trying to do is is patriotic that welcoming feel when they're here and they're shopping and so, you know when they decide they're going to you know they're driving down the road somewhere and they say hey let's stop in pikeville we were there we enjoyed it let's try it again so yeah the mountains embrace everyone and certainly that's how we want our visitors to yes. feel is embraced so let's talk a little bit more about pj for just a minute because he is working feverishly on our trail system yes, every we... day i i see a picture on his uh, facebook <laughs> or on tourism's facebook page that he and and some of the volunteers from the fire department from are the fire out in the woods cutting yeah. trails um, but we're also looking for other volunteers who have that same interest to, sure. to jump on board. Yeah, anybody that's interested in helping, you know, it's, it's, it's Patrick at AppalachianWirelessArena.com. I think it's AppWirelessArena.com is actually how it goes, but you can Google us and find us. Uh, but yeah, PJ is, uh, with the help of the fire department, uh, we're putting in a new trail. Uh, obviously, we're taking care of the existing trails that are there, but there is one that he has kind of created by mapping that's uh, it's going to be about a six-mile loop. And it's going to be very challenging in some areas. It's going to be very easy in others. Uh, and we're calling it the real McCoy. Uh, it's, it's really going to challenge those folks that want to be challenged. And then the ones that just want a nice little walk in the woods, they can do that too. Yeah, <laughs> on any given day. Any given. That's the That's great me. thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the great thing about our trail system. For a number of years, our local people, our community members, and people in the surrounding counties um, have taken part in our trail system and understand the, the natural beauty that it has and the level of difficulty that those provide, especially too with our horse trails, you know, you can always do that as well. Uh, but really being able to market that trail system to other places and to our far reaching areas three hours away to invite those people to come in and take part in this is gonna be something that really boosts our It is, we're going to, uh, we're not sure when we're gonna be done. We're, we've got about, uh, probably about a mile and a half of the six miles actually complete. But the hope is, is one, we'll do an event there uh, that, that ties in the trail to ha help get the word out. But as we're doing it, the fire department with PJ, they're mapping it as they go. So hopefully once that's done, we have those Google Maps, uh, we have you know, whatever those hiking people do to, to figure out where they are. Uh, we'll have all of that ready. We'll have signs, signage out. They, it, we're even hoping to have signs that tells you what kind of trees you're walking past. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun trail. Uh, it's gonna be something that you truly enjoy and, and challenges you. A big effort, another big effort that PJ is very going to be very involved is that our is our fishing with the kids event that we've had for a number of summers in conjunction with Chad Webb. Yes, it's a, it's a wonderful event. I mean, yes. you know, anytime anytime we do something with kids, it's just so much fun to see the happiness in their face. Uh, it just it's it's contagious, and so uh, it's a very fun event. We're all looking forward to it because. Truthfully, it's all new to us. Uh, you know, it's been around, but you know, for Kevin, PJ, and myself, and even Lauren, uh, we've never partaked in it. So it's going to be fun to be down there to watch them, uh, watch all those kids. I mean, I think the last time there was over two thousand mm -hmm. that were here. So it's going to be a fun event to. It is something like you, you mentioned the the delight and the happiness on the kids kids faces but also their parents too because yeah. a lot of times we're all so busy with activities and school and work and just life in general that we don't get a chance to carve out that time just to have with our kids and this is one of those ways that we can offer that kind of event and let them escape just for a little bit to have a good time exactly and that's the type of events that we're looking forward to to do going down the road is is what can we do that that ties the families together um you know in in my industry in the arena there's a lot of times that you know i feel like i watch my kids grow up in school pictures and so that's a huge focus for us is how can we tie families into what we're doing whether it's hiking or fishing or you know just partaking on something at the arena or at the app center we want it to be family type entertainment yeah because you know if you have kids, small kids especially, you know, that's where the money comes. Yep. Like if you can get your kids to buy into something, then you're going to spend. Yeah, that's the arena side. That's that why we have the Paw Patrol side. on June 4th and 5th. <laughs> Listen, I was at the last Paw Patrol that we had. Enormously attended event. Yes. So much fun. Not only for her, uh, she was three, four maybe at the time, but also for us. I mean, just yeah, seeing that. I mean, kind of takes you back to your childhood a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, how are tickets for that? Are still available? Doing very well. The tickets are still available. We're doing two shows on the 4th, two shows on the 5th. So there's plenty of options there and uh, yeah get your tickets and get, come on out and get them now so special events coming up in the city of Pikeville not I've said before if you don't think that there's anything to do here then I don't know what rock you're under because we have something yeah going we're, on. we're still looking for you we're trying to figure out where you're at <laughs> 
I don't understand. You're not getting a word. No, but we're going to make sure that happens. So our uh, National Police Week is coming up, and yes. Kevin has really been dedicated to a contest downtown to support um, our businesses and to honor our police. Yeah, it's uh, just one of those little ideas that uh, Kevin came up with. And uh, what we're going to do, we're getting with the local businesses, and uh, we're going to decorate windows for Police Week. And in doing so, they can win uh, some advertising packages from Mountaintop Media and uh, Appalachian News Express. And so it's it's a benefit to them, to whoever gets selected to win. And, and then of course, we've went a step further and said, we'll come clean your windows after we're done. <laughs> I'm not sure why that part of the idea. Yeah, I'm not you sure are. why that part of the idea was <laughs> put thrown out there. Uh, but you know, it's, it should be a fun event. It just brings us all together to recognize the men and women that that are there for our protection. And uh, so it's it's good to recognize them. It's good to say, hey, we appreciate what you do. We don't get to tell you that every day, but at least this week we're gonna let you know. Yeah. So. And that's gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure you get with your families, get out and walk those streets to see to see the windows and then pop in to, uh, to support yes. those local small businesses. Now, festival season is getting into full swing. We just had Hillbilly Days, which I hear that you estimated 150,000 people. So we're going to go with that. That works for me. I mean, it's a lot of people. <laughs> you want to up it a little bit? That's okay. But it was a huge event. Yes. And we were all so busy. Um, I don't even think, and I don't know if this was your experience, but I just kind of went from point A to point B and really not a whole lot in between because we were so busy working the entire time. I know the arena was extremely busy with concerts and the plaza and events going on there. Um, but the 4th of July is going to be the next event that we have, or it, festival that we have. It's the next one coming up. We're going to... Uh, you know, kind of spice it up a little bit. There's a car show one day. Um, I'm not sure. Kevin's got it all in his head, but we have uh, several new items that we're going to add to that 4th of July celebration. Hopefully more food trucks, uh, hopefully more vendors. Obviously, there's going to be plenty of music uh, taken care of in the uh, plaza at the arena and I think even the park. I think mm -hmm. we got some going on at the gazebo going to be a lot of fun. I know yes. last year's festival was was well attended for the first year. We were kind of getting our feet wet again after the you know the COVID shutdown, so we were easing our way back into it. But now we're we're ready to go full force, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, the other festival we had for the first time last year was Moonshine Music and Makers. Um, our, the weather didn't really cooperate with us for that one very much, but still well attended. Great message, great meeting, and certainly true to our heritage here in Eastern Kentucky. Exactly, and anytime you know, and that's what people are looking for. It's it's they're looking they want to go somewhere authentic. Mm -hmm. They want to see the where the roots are. You know what made Apple. And so that's a perfect event. You know, it puts it all together, you know, music and, and, and the crafting, the artisan, and obviously moonshine. Um, new for this year, we have a concert that'll be Saturday night of the, uh, of the festival. We can't tell you who it is yet. Oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, but Look hopefully that. that's going to announce probably somewhere towards the end of June. Uh, and we'll have a concert on the Saturday night. The, the festival runs Thursday through Saturday. So, you know, there obviously will be music out on the plaza from Thursday and Friday. And then, you know, we'll, we'll cap it all off with a concert in the arena. One of the other events that we have on October that's been going on for a few years now is Hoptoberfest. Yes. And this is a really cool, um, intimate event um, outside and has a huge following. It does. Uh, you know, microbrewing has you know really taken off over the last few years, and uh, it's just it's just fun to showcase those businesses that it's in, you know, Appalachia. Uh, it, you know, most of them are all Eastern Kentucky breweries, and so we bring them in, and uh, it just gives you an opportunity to to. Uh, sample brews that you're probably not going to get to you know they're maybe they're off the beaten path somewhere that you're not heading here it gives you an opportunity to have them right here in your backyard yeah it's a lot of fun so uh, watch for more publicity on that and then of course the entire month of december uh one of i know a local favorite event is Winterfest and ice yes. skating in the park we're going to do Winterfest this year, but there's going to be so much more we're adding for mm -hmm. Christmas. Uh, in fact, uh, we're going to start meeting probably in the next month or so to start laying out Christmas. Uh, we're going to start the, the, the weekend that there's the tree lighting and go into the week before Christmas. And there's going to be something going on every weekend. That's going to be a lot of fun. I, I know those meetings are starting to come up. I just had um, the uh, pleasure of ordering a few more 
decorations for town. So it's all Christmas all the time here yes. in the city of Pikeville. We certainly enjoy our visitors that come for Christmas. And, and like you said, there's going to be a lot of different things and new things yes. added to Winterfest this year. Uh, the app is staying really busy. Yes. Also which, one of your, so. um, under your umbrella. Under, under the umbrella. <laughs> that one I actually have to look at notes because Robin and Eric over there, they do such a fantastic, and they're doing something all the time uh -huh. that I can't even keep up. Uh, you know, I think right now in the gallery, we have quilts yes. that you can go see. Uh, uh, and it's just phenomenal. I mean, you know, just to walk through it and see the the talent that uh, this lady has for quilt making is amazing. Uh, but they do, they have Driving Miss Daisy coming up, which, you know, that was a fun movie to watch. So it's interesting to, to see it in this uh, concept. So looking forward to that one. Uh, Jungle Book is part of their uh, their uh, camps that they do. So that, you know, there'll be shows announced for that for the kids to actually perform. So that's always fun. Legally Blonde Junior is uh, coming up in July. And then obviously the big uh, event that they, they put on fabulously is Mountain Girl. Uh, that one we're hoping uh, this year is bigger than last year. Uh, you know, last year was kind of those anomalies that, you know, do people come out, do they mm -hmm. not? And so we're really looking forward to this year. A lot of great talent is going to be in town. A lot of local people that right. you didn't know that they had this, this talent behind them. Uh, it'll be showcased that weekend and we're really looking forward to it. So that's the app. That's now let's switch to the other A at the arena. the arena. So you mentioned Paw Patrol already. One of my favorites coming up in July, and that's Poison. Waited yes. for that for yeah. a bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I don't like to share this with that, but I may be a little Poison fan. That may be why they're on the schedule. Uh, you know, who, can, who, who does not like Poison? Uh, <laughs> the and then add Lita Ford to it, another mm -hmm. legend in, in, the, in the rock side. So it's going to be a great event. It's actually one of our original events from 2020 that was uh, postponed. So it's, it's great to finally get it out there. So many people were holding tickets. Nobody just, they just didn't want to give up that ticket. So, you know, we offered refunds as soon as the, the show was postponed, but nobody gave up their tickets. And so uh, it's exciting to finally get it out there and, and enjoy a show that we thought we were going to do a couple of years ago. I think some people are uh, scheduling their vacations around that show. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> Foreigner also coming to the Appalachian Wireless Arena just announced in August. Another great show um, that I, I'm sure will be well attended. It's just one of those iconic bands. It is. Uh, Foreigner, I mean, there's so many hits. I mean, uh, well, of course, they call it the greatest hits tour, and they should. I mean, there's just so many, you know, Jukebox Hero and, and, and just so many come to mind that, you know, it's, it's a wonderful event. And to finally have them here in Pikeville, to, you know, it's just going to be fun to do. Comic-Con. Comic Con. Yeah. It is a blast. That's different. And it's, <laughs> it's fun. It's, it is so much fun. <laughs> I enjoy walking around at that event. It's mm -hmm. just the, the, the artists and of people and their their imagination and what they create uh, in costumes and, and whatever. It's just fun to see it. Also, ZZ Top, another one of those rock shows that people are talking about. Yeah, you know, ZZ Top hasn't played the arena since 2007. So it was kind of a little bit of an anomaly there. We got them back. It was uh, it was kind of tough. This was a show that we were working on prior to the pandemic. So, you know, to finally get it nailed down, it's, it's good to have. That's a good thing. And then a day to remember, August 24th. That's a little bit more harder rock uh, for the those that, uh, you know, think as old guys that listen to ZZ Top and Poison, you know, kind of <laughs> put us out the pasture. The day to remember, a uh, phenomenal band. Uh, like I said, a little bit more heavier on the rock side. They have Bear Two with them, which is you know, pretty much a metal band. And then Bad Omens out of Richmond, Virginia is the uh, opener of it. We're excited about it. This is kind of, it's, it's a process in getting rock back into the market. And so as you see, the shows are getting a little bit bigger, a little bit better than what we had previously. So there again, this one's well attended, like our Trinity of Terror back in April that sold out. This one does the same. There'll be more to come. There'll be more. That's right. So much going on. So many opportunities for people to get out and enjoy, uh, spend time with their kids, spend time with their families. Uh, just a wonderful effort on our tourism side. And there's a lot of different uh, tourism uh social media sites that people can go to to keep updated. One of those, one of my favorite things that we've just offered now is Tourism Tuesdays with yes. Laura McCourt. Yes. The best little thing is two minutes, uh, two minutes or three minutes, but really showcases our downtown and our businesses. It's a lot it of fun is, to watch. It, this, And I'll take credit for that. It was actually my so idea, idea to begin okay. with. Uh, <laughs> but she, she, she took it a little bit further. She made it Tourism Tuesday. She did a wonderful job with it. Uh, but the, yeah, the idea was is that what we can do on tourism to help 
you know, in, enhance someone's businesses or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was uh, Lauren, she had a background in TV. So it's like, hey, she's the perfect candidate. She knows how to talk to a camera. So we'll put her out there and, and she's done a phen phenomenal job. I think we've only got two under her belt right now, but there'll be more to come. I'm trying to talk on her doing every Tuesday, but yeah. You know. <laughs> Baby steps. Yeah, baby steps. No, they're a lot of fun to watch. I look forward to them every week, and sometimes I get a sneak peek, so that's a lot of fun, too. So social media platforms that people can go to. Uh, everything. You know, their Pikeville City Tourism is on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Even TikTok now. TikTok, yeah. See, I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> The old guy over here, you know, I'm still Facebook. Baby you know. steps. Baby steps. So, That's yeah, there's right. there's many of them. But, yeah, Lauren, uh, they actually tag team that one. Lauren, PJ, and Kevin uh, operate those uh, social mm -hmm. media sites. So there's, pay attention. There's a lot more going on. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a little bit more posting going on to let you know what's. We actually were, were discussing a new idea uh, for um, the social media that we call Did You Know? Mm -hmm. And it's just taking little things in the city that, you know, obviously the city's done that maybe people don't know about. Like outside the arena, you can lock your bike up, you can pump your tire, you can work on your bike. There's mm -hmm. tools there. But we're going to put that out there on social media so you, you know that it's there. Absolutely. So, Making sure that everybody is well informed. Yes. As even if they live here or if they're coming in. Exactly. Everybody's yeah. included. The more they know, the better. That's exactly <laughs> right. Exactly right. Well, I look forward to next month when we can sit down again and talk about even more projects that are coming through. See how long uh, the trail is at that point. So I figure it will be I'm at least a three. couple more miles. Yeah, I'm hoping yeah. we're at least three by then. <laughs> so uh, it'll be a fun time to update everyone as we go forward into the new year. And congratulations on your new your new hat that you wear. Thank you very much. We'll see what else we can add. <laughs> we'll see. Paul Bowles, Executive <laughs> Director of Pikeville Tourism, thank you so much and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.